Hi, I'm Melinda Rose. And I'm Laura Marshall. And this is Light Matters for July 27th, 2011. In this week's show, a holographic material stores 20 Blu-rays on one disc, laser surgery shows promise for curing epilepsy, the first optoelectronic 3D photonic crystal is developed, and Fleer and Trump share financial news. A new micro-holographic material can support data recording at the same speed as Blu-ray discs, but with 10 times their typical storage capacity. DVDs and Blu-ray discs typically store information on up to four layers at the disc surface, while the new method uses holograms written into the entire volume of the disc. That means the new system can store as many as 10 double-layer Blu-rays, 100 DVDs, or the hard drive of most laptop computers all on a single disc. The new material is attractive for consumer entertainment systems because it will read and record on systems very similar to a typical Blu-ray or DVD player, GE researchers said, and will also be able to play existing discs from those formats. Laser ablation surgery could transform the lives of the 1 in 100 people living with epilepsy. Texas Children's Hospital is the first in the world to use real-time MRI-guided thermal imaging and laser technology to destroy lesions in the brain that cause epilepsy and uncontrollable seizures. Here's what Dr. Daniel Curry, Director of Pediatric Surgical Epilepsy and Functional Neurosurgery at the hospital, had to say about the surgeries he performed. An open craniotomy involves a large incision in the child's head and resection of the epileptogenic tissue of the brain. In contrast, the laser ablation technique only requires a small drill hole in the skull, just enough to let me pass a probe through this gap, through the tissue of the brain, and into the lesion that is the target. And this delivers the laser light and the heat. The heating of the of the lesion allows us to destroy that target, but the surrounding structures are left unharmed, and it has a drop-off of injury of less than one millimeter, which is incredibly accurate, and as accurate or more accurate than I can do with my own two hands. In other traditional ablative procedures, we have to perform it essentially blind. In this technique, we know exactly where we are. The case of nine-year-old Keegan Dicehart of Converse, Texas was particularly high risk because his lesion was located in the highly sensitive region of the hypothalamus near the brainstem. It also made him an ideal candidate for the procedure which was performed in March. He is now seizure free. Epitaxy, a bottom-up growth method commonly used to create flat two-dimensional films, has been applied to an intricate 3D structure for the first time. A single crystal semiconductor of gallium arsenide was grown through a complex template of tiny spheres packed together, enabling new optical properties in the photonic crystal while maintaining its very attractive electrical ones. Previous attempts at making 3D photonic crystals, mostly through top-down fabrication methods, produced defect-riddled devices that could direct light but could not turn electricity to light or vice versa. Because the new crystal is optoelectronically active, it could also open up new avenues for solar cells, lasers, LEDs, metamaterials, and more. To test their technique, University of Illinois material scientists built a 3D photonic crystal LED, the first such working device. In business news this week, Germany-based laser and machine tools maker Trumpf said the 2010-2011 fiscal year featured a 51% sales increase from about 1.9 billion U.S. dollars to 2.9 billion, making it this company's second most successful year ever. Orders for the year also reached an all-time high, even exceeding those of 2007-2008, the company's pre-financial crisis benchmark. Trump won't announce its official earnings figures until October 19th, but says it expects its better-than-projected numbers to continue for the entire 2011-2012 fiscal year and to post very healthy profit numbers as well. Thermal imager maker FLIR Systems of Oregon announced this week that it has acquired Arius Photonics for $27 million in cash. Arius, based in Ventura, California, makes indium gallium arsenide based infrared detectors, high power Vixel diodes, and other products for commercial and military applications. The company will join FLIR's commercial systems business. FLIR also announced lower earnings for the second quarter, which ended June 30th, and reduced its outlook for the rest of the year. Well, that's almost it for this edition of Light Matters. Before we go, we want to let you know that we're going to launch a contest to give away an iPad beginning next week. Be sure to watch next week to find out all the details. In the meantime, visit photonics.com for more on any of the stories we featured today. 
We hope you share Light Matters and you'll find the icons to do so at the bottom of this player. Please send your questions or comments to lightmatters at photonics.com. You can also follow Photonics Media on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching and join us next week for another 5 Minutes of Enlightenment. Thank you.